Welcome, everybody. Um, today is the ongoing Fukushima Daiichi crisis, ongoing radioactive discharges, and other current issues. Um, with us today is Gregory Yatsko, former chairman of the U.S. Regular Nuclear, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Torgan Johnson, citizen's representative of, of San Diego Forgum, forum that was instrumental in closing down a um, nuclear generating station in San Diego, and the Citizens Commission on Nuclear Energy, CCNE, which invited both of these gentlemen here to speak about how citizens could become more active in determining um, nuclear energy policy and the state of nuclear energy in Japan. We have limited time since two of our guests have to get on an airplane at 11. So uh, without further ado, if you want to know more about this, you all have the handout here. Um, first we'll speaking is Mr. Gregory Yatsko, who was the former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, followed by Torgan Johnson, and then followed by Tetsuro Tsutsui, and then we will take questions and answers. Um, Mr. Yatsko, oh, sorry, Mr. Yatsko, um, please go ahead. Okay. Well, thanks, Jake. Um, it is a uh, real pleasure to be here uh, to address you this morning. Uh, I've had an opportunity over the last um, several days to visit uh, with a number of different people here in Japan and hear about uh, their concerns and issues uh, dealing with nuclear power in the aftermath of uh, the Fukushima Daiichi uh, accident. One of the things that, um, that has uh, become very clear to me and became clear to me after the accident began is that these kinds of nuclear accidents that have really economy-wide impact are simply unacceptable uh, in, in Japanese society, in American society, and I think really all over the world. So it, it gives us an opportunity to take a, a step back and figure out how we go forward and how we ultimately move forward in a way that eliminates the possibility of these kinds of accidents. And one of the keys to that uh, certainly is the active involvement and engagement of the public. Decisions about nuclear technology are often controversial. They are often very difficult, uh, involving sometimes science that has uh, limited uh, consensus among technical experts. And so it's incumbent to fully engage the public and be uh, active on the part of the government, on the part of the utilities, on the part of the citizens to, to be active participants in, in, this, uh, in this endeavor. We know what the impact of the Fukushima Daiichi accident was. It's 160,000 people evacuated from their homes, some, most of them still to this day. It's a, a significant land contamination event, and it's, it's an event that, at a minimum, estimates have shown will impact the Japanese economy on the order of about 500 billion U.S. dollars, right? I think if I do my math right, that's 50 trillion yen. And it's a, a, an accident that will leave a leg, legacy of cleanup and decontamination and decommissioning that will last for decades. Now, there has been a lot of interest lately, uh, internationally certainly, and I've seen that in the United States about the efforts to deal with water contamination uh, at the site, a combination of, of problems from tanks that are storing uh, contaminated water and groundwater migration through the site. All of these issues are extremely significant, but they are just the beginning of the work that will need to be done. Over the next several months, there will be activities related to removing fuel from the, the Unit 4 spent fuel pool. This is also a very significant uh, uh, activity from a safety perspective. So there's a lot of activity and there's a lot of uh, work to be done and much of that is extremely safety significant. So that's why it's so important to have the public fully engaged. Uh, there will invariably be setbacks in this work and it's important to have a good dialogue and a good debate, not only to be able to communicate these setbacks as they occur, but ultimately to be able to solicit and get the best advice and recommendations about how to move forward with many of these issues. Every time I come to Japan, I'm amazed by the, the spirit and the creativity and the, the hard work and the ethic of hard work of the Japanese people. And I think it's extremely important to utilize all the resources that exist in Japan to work on solving these challenges because they are ultimately unprecedented. 
the, the accident at Fukushima Daiichi has, has left a legacy of contamination that is, is very different from any other radiological disaster uh, that has happened in the world. And ultimately, we have to change the mindset about people believing that accidents can't happen. Before the accident, too many people believed in that mindset. And that's part of the challenge and part of the important need to change as we go forward. Fundamentally, as I've looked at this accident and as I've talked to people in communities that surround nuclear power plants in the United States, in Japan, it's become clear to me that we need to think about safety in a whole new way. We need to think about nuclear technology being used in a way that it cannot lead to evacuations. It cannot lead to land contamination events. This is something that we wouldn't accept in any other kind of technology. And even though these events are anticipated and expected to be extremely rare, they still can happen, and they did happen at Fukushima Daiichi. So as we go forward and we think about nuclear technology and the use of nuclear technology, it's time to completely remove the possibility of severe accidents. That means a whole new way of looking and thinking about nuclear technology, and it may mean rethinking the reactors that are currently in operation today. So as I've met with people and, and attended public meetings over the last several days, I've challenged the people that have, have come before me to be active participants, to be actively engaged in the work that, that is going to be needed to, to be done in Japan to address the issues with Fukushima Daiichi, to address the very difficult decisions about restarting nuclear power plants in this country. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here with, with Torgan Johnson, who, uh, is from Southern California, and I met him when I was working as the chairman of the NRC because of the work that he was doing to organize people in his community and to bring facts to their attention that would help them be informed participants in the debate and discussion about the power plant in his community. And I'm especially pleased to be here with Dr. Tsutsui, who has a tremendous background and has ideas and thoughts about how to address and tackle the challenges of Fukushima Daiichi. And these are very, very difficult challenges. And, and I think if there's any lasting message that I could leave, it's that to tackle these challenges, the best and brightest minds from Japan, and if necessary from the rest of the world, will need to be brought to bear to come up with solutions. And I think it's very, it's very difficult to say that there's a right answer. There will, be, there will be difficult choices, and there will ultimately be uh, sacrifices and, and, and choices that will have to be made. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, address all of you, and, uh, and I'd be happy to uh, answer questions when we get to there. Thank you.